All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another phenomenal episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your host, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with Paul Scanlon and Jeff Anison from Legion M, the world's first fan-owned entertainment company with over 100,000 members and 25,000 fan owners. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Ooh. thank you for having thank us. Thank you. That was a great intro, man. Can you be like our hype man? <laughs> if you need a hype man, I would be more than glad to be your hype man. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, you know, I guess let's go ahead and start with the genesis, the beginning. Um, you know, how did you guys come up? I know that you worked together. Paul was telling me for about 20 years, but what was the driving force behind, you know, Legion M, which I think is just such a phenomenal idea to get the fans involved with the financing and ideas for movies. Thank you. Yeah, no, we're, we're excited. I mean, as I mentioned, Jeff and I, we've, we've known, we've been working together for 20 years. So we're, we're serial entrepreneurs. We've uh, co-founded three companies together. Uh, the first one was a was a technology company that ended up becoming a media company. In fact, we ended up winning an Emmy from the Television Academy and had all kinds of success with that company. And um, it, but it was a, it was one of the early pioneers of streaming media. So we were one of the first to put you know entertainment content on phones and. So we love kind of rethinking industries and looking at things a little bit differently and, and blazing a new trail. And uh, in 2016, there was um, uh, a new law that, that, that uh, was written in by the SEC that allowed for the first time in history what, what, what is now called equity crowdfunding, meaning that we could go and unite entertainment fans to co-own our own company. And, and it was like taking crowdfunding to the next level. Crowdfunding yeah. is awesome. And we're, we're huge champions of the whole crowdfunding industry. Mm. But one of the gaps that it had is that you could raise capital, but you couldn't sell shares in the project. So you could give a coffee mug or a t-shirt or some reward, but you couldn't actually give equity. Uh, and so when this new rule passed, we, we had actually announced the company a couple months prior uh, and, and we were just ready to go. And so, you know, on, on the eve of, uh, this, the jobs act, uh, enabling it, we started uniting fans to co-own our own entertainment company. And, you know, our, our dream and our, our kind of objective, our long-term goal is to unite 1 million entertainment fans and then, you know, take over Hollywood, but take over Hollywood in a nice way. The way we look at it, you know, we feel like we can add a lot of value and, Today, the average investor puts like, you know, between four and five hundred dollars. So at a million, if you think of it, we'll have yeah. raised four to five hundred million dollars to invest in TV shows and movies that have a million people emotionally and financially invested in them. And, you know, for us, that A, that sounds like a lot of fun, but B, that sounds like a really cool business model. And so we're four years in and you know, as entrepreneurs, you know, you're always kind of curious how the world will receive your, you know, your vision when you, sure. when you put it out there. And, you know, we're so grateful for the support that we've had. Uh, we're more bullish now than, than ever about the, the, the company and, you know, the projects that we've been able to get involved in. And, and, and really, you know, at the core of it is this just awesome community that has come together, this fast growing community that, is supporting, you know, this, this movement. And yeah, so it's been really fun. Awesome. Awesome. Jeff, what's your, what's your take on it? I, I mean, I think that Paul, Paul, Paul really hit <laughs> on it. It's, it's uh, I mean, I think what's really cool about it is that a lot of people look at Legion M as uh, almost like an emotional investment. Like it's something that they want to be a part of and it's something, you know, they, that they want to, open the gates of Hollywood and they want to come in and they want to have a say in what's being made and they want to, you know, come along for the ride as we develop it. Yeah. And, you know, like, like that's something that we work really hard to do. We have the saying that, you know, having fun can be good business. And, you know, what we try and do is create opportunities for people to come into, you know, the process and, mm -hmm. and be a part of it in ways that they've never been before. But I think what some people don't realize is that, you know, having fun can be good business and <laughs> there's a really smart business model 
behind all this, this idea yeah. that, you know, if you get a million fans together to own an entertainment company, like, A, not as it only fun and like yeah. the most kick-ass entertainment company there could be, but, you know, you're, you're, you, you've got a built-in fan base that can mm -hmm. help all of your projects succeed and everything that you do succeed. And you've got, you know, a, a million scouts that can help you identify what's hot. And you've got uh, an enormous source of, uh, of energy and material for crowdsourcing. And so literally what we do every day is look at our competitive advantage, which is the fact that we've got this amazing community of people mm -hmm. and see how it can make the company more successful and so you know what i love about legion m is you know maybe half the people are in it because they think that it's just a good time but if we're successful and if we're able to uh achieve our goals and those are two very big ifs because we're yeah. a startup company but if we are those people are going to make money and potentially yeah. a lot of money because if yeah. we're successful we believe we could literally become one of the most influential companies on the planet I love it. I love it so much. I mean, the way I look at it is think big and 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 dream bigger. And, uh, you know, yeah. the fact that it's a fan based company, I mean, because there's so many people in the world that are just passionate about pop culture and films and movies in particular. And, you know, I had this conversation with a buddy of mine, Freddie uh, Valoy, who's got his own podcast. And he was asking, you know, just movies and pop culture, what it means to me and my family, you know, I mean, that's how, that's half of our conversations, you know, are based on movies and it takes you to a time and place, you know, like I can remember who I was dating or what I was going through in life, depending on what movie was out at the time and yeah. things like that. And to be able to, you know, be a part of something big without a huge, you know, like initial investment, unless you wanted to, but, you know, to, to be able to invest four or 500 for something that could be as massive as the entertainment industry, I mean, why not? It's like, you know, investing four to 500 in Facebook when they first came out. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Actually, uh, just a little side story. I was telling um, Rob, who hooked this all up, I ran into uh, Kevin Porter, who was in the movie Dodgeball. Uh, me, my daughter, and some friends were at New York Comic Con in 2017, and we were all dressed as average Joes. And it might have been you guys with him. I don't remember, but he came up and he was like, hey, I played, uh, I forgot, Laser, I think it was, yeah. in Dodgeball. So we all got a picture together. He was with he was with some people from Legion M at New York Comic Con. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. It yeah, was really yeah. cool to see all that kind of coming to fruition. I told him, too, I was like, hey, I just started kind of following the company. And he was like, dude, I love it. He was like, they are yeah. fantastic. So uh, That's he awesome. gave a big, big shout out. So that was, uh, you really know, it was cool amazing. to see that. Um, awesome. So talk a little bit about, you know, I was looking over the site the last few days and uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit, Jeff, you know, Film Scout, it sounds like a really, really awesome idea. Um, and, you know, especially coming from like, say people like myself in Greensboro, like we don't have a lot of film festivals and things like that here. And of course we would love to, but, um, you know, uh, like just kind of talk a little bit about film, the, the Film Scout. I think it's an app, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, you want to talk about it? Go for it. Yeah, sure. So it's a uh, uh, Film Scout is an app that you can download on your Android or iOS phone. And uh, we used it at Sundance this year. You can actually still download it. The voting's over, um, okay. meaning that we're not tabulating the results, but you can go ahead and download it because we will be doing it with some other uh, film festivals in the future. Um, but basically it's, it's designed uh, for two things. Uh, one is if you are in you know north carolina and you want to be a part of what's happening at sundance mm -hmm. you can go in and we have summarized we've collected all the information that we can for all the films that are playing at sundance mm -hmm. um you know S sundance is uh you know there's i think this year there were about 120 different films that mm -hmm. we were considering there and most of them are brand new so wow. you know a lot of them don't even have trailers available but okay. you know, we've aggregated all the information information we, that we can. So you can see who's in it, what it's about. You can read the synopsis. Uh, you know, you can see a shot from it, uh, who directed it, you know, what they've directed before, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we basically created a game that allows you to evaluate these different films and choose which ones you prefer, okay. as well as which ones you think will be most successful. And, you know, for the first answer, what you prefer, that is entirely up to you. There's no sure. right answer. Yeah. Um, but what you think everybody is going to prefer, like that's something that we can grade, right? Because we've got all the results coming in. Sure. And so 
what we do is we use that to a aggregate data that yeah. allows us to make a decision at Sundance, right? When we yeah. go to Sundance, we got to decide, are there projects here that Legion M should be a part of? Sure. And, you know, traditionally, if we were a traditional company, that would come down to probably an argument between Paul and I, because <laughs> Paul has terrible taste in and a movies. little bit of arm wrestling. <laughs> I have amazing taste in movies. And so, you know, but still, you know, we, we go back and forth and, and, and that's the way that it works, you know, but, but fortunately, because we're a fan owned company, it's like I said earlier, we've got this amazing resource that nobody else has, which is, you know, thousands of people around the world. And so people vote, we use that data to help make decisions. Uh, but like I said, it's also gamified in that, um, we measure your score and see how good of a scout you are. And when it's all done, we release a leaderboard uh, that allows you know you to see how you stack up against everybody else. And uh, the top, I think it's the top five percent of the people uh, then get invited to join our elite scout program. Oh wow! Um, and again, gives us the opportunity to you know if we get a screener from a from a company. And they're like, hey, take a look at this film. Should we get involved? Again, it's the exact same thing. Like typically, Paul and I would watch it and, you know, some of the members of the staff. But now we've got a group of people, a small group of people, because we sure. can't send that to thousands of people. But right. We can send it to four or five. Right. And now we're sending it to people that have demonstrated an ability to predict what everybody else is going to think. And so so that's kind of the, the, the fundamental um, idea uh, behind Film Scout. This is the second year that we've done it. Um, uh, we love it because we think that, A, it's a great way to give our community agency uh, over what we're doing because they're literally mm -hmm. helping us choose what yeah. film. But the other part of it is, is, you know, we think that it helps us make better business decisions because at the end sure. of the day, we trust the, those opinions from thousands of people way more, you know, than ours. Um, and there's a whole other uh, part of it that Paul should talk about, which is uh, the way that we use it at the festival itself. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so we've, we've implemented this now twice. Um, we did it in, uh, 2019 at Sundance and we bought a film called memory, the origins of alien. And as Jeff mentioned, you know, it's nice to be able to like, when we arrive in park city, we, we typically usually already have tens of thousands of votes on the platform. So we, we know immediately which films should be on our high priority list. And we can, we can use that data to start meeting with filmmakers. Um, and it's really compelling when we sit down in front of a filmmaker and we tell them, look, we're interested in your film. We've seen it. We've got good feedback on it. And they're like, what do you mean we've got good feedback? And we tell them like, oh, well, we've got, you know, tens of thousands of votes telling us that your film is, is interesting. We've got, you know, people here at Sundance that are writing reviews. And, you know, having this data is just so critical. We've got a lot of distributors that want to kind of team up with us because, you know, we, we believe that this data is like ultimately like a good predictor of, of what a Rotten Tomato score could be. And right. the scores are really critical. Memory, The Origins of Alien, the movie we bought is 92% audience score and 82% critic score wow. today after we've released it. And so, you know, this was our first exercise of the film scout platform we used it again in 2020 2020 so just back in january which right before this uh coronavirus pandemic set in mm. um but we had again even i think we had twice as many votes on the platform we have zeroed in we have two films that we're in discussions with right now we haven't made any announcements but it's so fascinating to see the data and just like which films scored well in the interest like i'm interested in seeing these films but then also importantly like the people that saw those movies actually rated them highly and thought they were a, a worthwhile movie and that's 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 the other key component of it so we yeah we have two movies that uh and and that we'll we'll be getting involved in and you know our goal over time because we legion m is a community yeah but we're we're built around this platform and the platform allows us to harness the insight and power of that community. And so Film Scout is one example, but, but there's, there are derivatives of Film Scout that we can use that go beyond even film festivals, you know, and kind of our search for IP 
and projects that we want to get into. I'm not going to announce anything here. But there, are, <laughs> there are some, there are some ideas, you know, we see film scout as kind of like the first, first um, phase of kind of doing this. Yeah. We also have another part of our platform called impulse, uh, which is more kind of generic allows us to just say like, you know, one of the reasons we invested in the, and helped bring Jay and silent Bob back to the screen was when we asked our community, you know, we were in our impulse survey, if we could work with anyone in Hollywood, who would it be? Yeah. And Kevin Smith routinely was coming up as one of the top, top um, votes. So, and we had a relationship with him. And so we reached out and we started talking and, you know, we're one of the, one of the um, financiers behind uh, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, which we also very narrowly uh, just got out through its theatrical release and the tour and everything that broke box office records before mm -hmm. uh, this coronavirus set in. So we feel pretty lucky that we were able to get that out. Yeah, very lucky. No, no, and, that, and that's uh, definitely fantastic. I remember the road show was actually coming through North Carolina. I can't remember if it hit right before or after. And, uh, you know, since we're on the topic, you know, obviously the craziness of coronavirus um, going on right now, people having to stay at home. You know, how have you guys as a company, you know, adjusted with that, uh, you know, as far as everything going on. And I mean, I think it's kind of cool too that Hollywood's kind of adjusting a little bit. You see some yeah. studios releasing stuff, whether direct to video or, yeah. or, uh, or rental, but you know, how are you guys as a company, you know, as far as any plans on, you know, adapting with, you know, things being the present time being, cause we don't know if we're going to be in our houses till May, till August, <laughs> the yeah. projections are all over the place. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, the good news is we're we're still a relatively small company and mm -hmm. and like pretty um, versatile. And you know, as I mentioned, we we had actually two projects that could have been very negatively impacted by the the coronavirus. The first one being, you know, the Jay and Silent Bob tour, and thankfully that one had like wrapped the tour yeah. and was going into VOD. Uh, so it it was actually it couldn't have been more more well-timed and the other um project is we have a really cool film that we're we're producing um called arch enemy starring joe manginello i saw and, that on the uh, website we had just wrapped shooting um shooting finished in january uh and we wow. also had sundance in january so we you know we kind of like you know we we timed everything pretty well um one of the things that but but and we had already started recalibrating to do more television anyway, you know, the mm -hmm. thing that's going to be the one area of the entertainment industry that's going to be impacted the most is, is theatrical. And, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully we're not like so deeply entrenched in theatrical, like we do do theatrical films, theatrical release. Sure. Um, but we're not as vulnerable as like the major studios because a lot of our, a lot of the projects at the level we're playing can still be monetized, you know, in a VOD platform just gotcha. effectively. Um, but where, what, but we, where we have kind of like reprioritized some stuff is, you know, we've got, um, a lot of our development slate is in television, uh, which is great because mm -hmm. the good news is that the TV buyers, you know, are going to keep buying content because, you know, we're all shut at home and, <laughs> and you know, consuming content. So yep. we feel pretty good about our kind of you know, the things that we have going there, it might probably negatively affect a few of the bigger budget, you know, um, uh, theatrical release projects that we had in development, but we can hold those, you know, we haven't invested a lot of money in them. They can kind of stay put and we can revisit them when we get to the other side. And, and Jeff, I don't know if you want to talk about, you know, some of the things that we've been doing just to engage the community. I mean, yeah. The community, like I said earlier, it's more engaged now than ever. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Well, and, 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 and we had a, we've had a number of um, uh, initiatives. Uh, like, we're always looking at new ways to engage the community. And uh, one of the things that we're uh, in the process of doing is launching a Twitch channel. Uh, because we awesome. think that Twitch is actually a really unique platform as far as being able to engage uh, with people. It's a very interactive platform. It's mm -hmm. a platform where um, uh, there's a lot of opportunity. And so, you know, 
uh, what what's happened is given the current situation and the fact that everybody's stuck at home, it's really accelerated a lot of our plans. And we're, mm. you know, figuring out like, okay, well, how can we all watch a movie together, right? How right. can we play games together? How can we develop content together? Because again, if you if you think of the superpower that we have, which is uh, uh, this legion of fans, um, you know, how can we find ways to tap into this and all the collective time that, you know, people have now, now that they're, you know, maybe stuck at home. And so uh, anyway, we've got a lot of really interesting stuff there. And uh, I think a lot of really fun stuff. And, and uh, Paul and I, I, you know, we're Silicon Valley guys. And so mm. everything is all about experimenting. And right. You don't know what's going to work. So you'll I see, like, if you're familiar with Legion, and we're talking about this all the time, like we're going to do a test here. And so right now, <laughs> You know, we're doing a two-month test of uh, of Twitch, and you know, it's either going to start to flower and flourish, in which mm -hmm. case we'll double down and we'll do more and more and more, sure. uh, or it won't, in which case, you know, we'll we will learn from that and we'll move on to the next thing. But it's uh, it's a fun it's a fun thing, and we think Twitch is a really great platform for that sort of thing. Awesome, awesome. Definitely keep us posted with all the details for that. We'd love to, you know, be able to pump it out um, on our platforms, website, the podcast, all that. Sure. So is there, so is, is, the, is the Twitch channel itself Legion M? Yeah, it's Legion M official. So the okay. Twitch channel is up. We've used it a few times. Um, we did a Stan Lee house party nice. uh, about three years ago when he was still alive. Like that was an epic night and we, we live streamed that on Twitch. Uh, and then the last uh, few years when we've been at Sundance Film Festival, you know, like two, three years ago when we were there with Mandy, the poster behind Paul, yeah, uh, you know, we were there uh, doing a Q&A with the producers of SpectraVision and Nicolas Cage uh, crashed it with um, Vince Neil, the, pr the front man of Motley Crue, yeah. who was like his plus one. And uh, so we've, we've done a lot of really cool stuff on Twitch, but the difference is, is that now we're looking to do stuff on a regular basis, like week after week, and and kind of develop it into more of a recurring, uh, a recurring place for people to get together and be a part of it. Awesome, awesome, man! I got a, a couple questions from the fans here, and I think I think you might have answered it a little bit already. Uh, one fan wanted to know, you know, as as far as. I don't want to use the term end game, but you know, down the road, I mean, as a plan to have your own like streaming network. I mean, I, I it, wouldn't like, it, I mean, the way we look at kind of, and we, we've talked to our community about this, like uh, we've really broken it down into phases and we call it the method to the, to our madness. And sure. we're, we're, we're out of phase one, which was just really getting the concept out there, uniting that initial community together Phase two is about, you know, leveling up, like doing bigger projects and also developing our own projects. Mm -hmm. um, phase three is a kind of like acceleration phase where we want to, you know, like we, we really think of building Legion M in this uh, concept of uh, the flywheel. Um, mm -hmm. we, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Jim Collins is one of my favorite business writers and wrote a book called uh, Good to Great. Uh, which is an amazing business. When Jeff and I started Moby TV way back when, it was required reading for all of our employees. And oh wow, I just I, I think it's still relevant today. And one of the things that he he talks about is that the the difference between a good company and a great company. Typically, he did this uh, like deep analysis on it. Uh, was that the co the great companies invest in their flywheel, and the flywheel is the thing that gives you kind of long term accumulating and sustainable advantages so sure. in our case our flywheel is our community the bigger yeah. our community gets the you know the bigger the bets we can make right yeah. so like one of the one one example of this is you know at i we were probably you know a half the size we were when we did this we backed a comic book uh, we, we actually created our own comic book for a movie that we will, that we're in the process of producing called girl with no name. Mm -hmm. And we put it on Kickstarter and we are, we broke a record. We are now the highest, most backed, um, comic book on Kickstarter. Wow. And so that was like, if you think of it, like that's what we could do with, uh, probably 15,000 investors. Now we have 25,000. Um, when we have a million you know, we're not only able to like produce and distribute our own films. I think 
it probably would be viable just like Disney ended up doing. At a certain point, you've got a big enough catalog. You just say, hey, look, it's great. We've been producing this content and selling it everywhere, but maybe now we want to kind of keep it for ourselves. We right. don't know. I mean, we're, you know, as Jeff mentioned, this Twitch channel is a great place for us to start. Yeah. And, you know, there is a subscription option on Twitch and we're going to, we're going to have that, that premium subscription capability. Mm -hmm. And if we can build up over time, that subscription, um, subscriber base, mm -hmm. then that is, that provides us with, with, uh, a budget to go out and produce content with. Yep. By the way, it's worth noting that in those, in that phased approach uh, that Paul was mentioning, phase six is when we get the theme parks. Yeah. <laughs> theme parks gotcha. There. Theme gotcha. parks are absolutely in there. That's Jeff Patrick. He, he started his career as a theme park uh, engineer, designer. All right. All designer right. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't love a good theme park that, you know, oh, the rides, everything. That's, that's great. That's great. Um, a, another fan asked, and this, uh, this is a kind of a, not really a two-parter. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my daughter's in film school, but I did get a couple questions in when we put the, uh, the feeler out there that we were going to be interviewing you guys, you know, for uh, people, whether if they're young getting into film school or just want to, you know, kind of break into the industry, whether as a, a writer or, you know, director, whatever, like, what are some kind of ways that they could get their name out there, but, you know, not just getting a diploma, but what, what are some avenues that you've seen have been, you know, effective for people, whether they want to just produce their own content or just really kind of want to try to make a name for themselves. So a studio like you could be like, Hey, this is a, you know, a great project. We'd like to pick it up. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I'd say, you know, for me and keep in mind, I, I'm an entrepreneur. Like Paul yeah. said, I started off as a theme park designer. I was a mechanical engineer in college. Yeah. I started off doing theme park design and then I got suckered into some entrepreneuring <laughs> for Moby TV. And, and the <laughs> next thing you know, I was addicted. And, you know, you wake up 20 years later and wonder where your life went. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, so it's difficult for me to give like, you know, saline experience on the creative side. Sure. Other than I would say this, if you want to be a creative and that's whether a writer or a director or, a, you know, a, a camera person, like create, right? I mean, that's the single best thing that you could do. I think film school is amazing and there are things that you'll learn, right? And, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of film school is also the networking and the getting to meet people, you know, like the fact that like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas went to film school to get like, it's not like a, like a coincidence, you know? Right. And so, so I, I feel like there's a lot of value that you can get from that. But again, the most important thing to do is if you want to be a writer, write, mm -hmm. just write and get it out there, get it where people can give feedback on it, put yourself out there. It's one of the hardest things to do, but I think that that's probably the single best thing that you can do. And it's wonderful because we live in an age with, with an iPhone, you can, you can create like they, who I, I forgot it was a Steven Sodenborough or, you know, the, yeah. the guy that did literally an entire yeah. feature length movie that was released in theaters that was shot on an Good. iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like two years ago. So that <laughs> right. was like the iPhone six, you know, so it's like, <laughs> it, like, like it, it's not a lack of tools, go out there, be yeah. creative. Everything that you do is something that can be a, a reference for you. And at the end of the day, that's, that's the single most important thing. I'd say that and just trying to meet other people yeah. that, that have the same passions. And again, that's one of the wonderful things about Legion M in communities like this. You know, like mm -hmm. Legion M, Hit Record is another great uh, creator community because you will be able to talk with people and meet people and learn from each other. And someone will say, oh, I've got this project and I need a writer. And you're like, oh, hey, I can write something. And I've got this other project, but I need a, I need someone who can shoot. And oh, you know, or I need score music. And so anyway, that's, that's, that's my long-winded advice. Go out there and just do it, baby. <laughs> nice, what about you, Paul? Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. I would say, you know, put yourself out there. Don't be shy. Um, I, I think there are a lot of communities. I mean, I think it's one of our sort of um, pledges and promises to our community is that we want to kind of develop people. We want, yeah. you know, a lot of our projects have come from, we don't over promise, like we don't want people to invest because, you know, and then expect us to cast them as the lead in our next film. <laughs> 
but we do whenever possible you know we try to enable these types of experiences where people can either gain access get their pitch heard maybe get cast in a in a in a project that they might not have otherwise been known or known about you know we like we did a cool thing on arch enemy um this is one of my favorite stories because i think it's just such a great example of what what a community like legion m can do for a project mm -hmm. and what that project can do for our community so in the case of arch enemy we were starting production um and we put it out to the director we said hey you know look we've got this community of people and they all want to get involved we all we all want to help we don't want to get in your way we're not going to be like giving you notes on stuff you know we just if you want to come up with a list of stuff that you need let us know you know yeah. and he gave us a list uh he and the producers gave us a list we published that list and we let our community know and it included you know it included extras like some small roles it included a hero the hero's car so they oh, wow. needed a car they were going to go rent a car they were going to break the windshield and have to repair it and, <laughs> you know, do all this stuff and it would have cost some money to do that and he said look we're going to do it if you guys want to like you know get us a car or if you if anyone in the community wants to lend us their car so we put that out to our community we had like dozens of cars maybe more than that i forget uh nominated you know by the by our community saying yeah i'd love my car to be joe manginello's car in in this kick-ass movie that's coming up we put that out we let the director choose we just put it all on a web page where yeah. he could just kind of browse it uh and then he came back to us and said you know there were pictures of cars basically that people would mm -hmm. submit and he picked a car and it and he even told us he said like the creative brief that i gave you is different from the car because i hadn't even thought of a car this cool and so okay. like the car he chose is totally unique there's no it's an el camino and it's owned by a, a legion m investor and member named matt conkling who was on set brought the car to set every day got to meet and be on set and it's like it's you know if you talk to matt it's completely changed his life not only did he like feel like he's had this great opportunity to like meet all these people, but his car is featured in a film and he's now changed his career and he's going to go into film. It like helped him, you know, he's a mechanic right now. He just sure. works on cars and you know, he's, he's got a good job, but he's like, you know what? I, I really like, I, I like that experience and I want to do more of it. And so, you know, he's going to find his way, I'm sure. And you know, if we can help him, we can, but like, that was an example of, we, we always call it like this virtuous cycle where yeah, yeah. there's something that we can do that is a win for our community, but it's also a win for the project. It's kind of like having fun and being a good business, you know? Mm -hmm. And the idea of saving the production on renting a car and dealing with that, and then, you know, uh, Matt gets this experience where he feels like he, he's, he's won something uh it's just a nice nice kind of way that like you know that that we can do this and so we're going to continue doing things like that and there were multiple people that were that are in the film from legion m that the director cast you know we had we had people upload their pictures and you know come and and they chose who they wanted for yeah. this scene and you know if we can keep doing stuff like that i think it's it, it it'll be great same thing with Jay and Silent Bob, by the way. If oh, you yeah. if you watch that one, mm -hmm. uh, that film, uh, a we were uh, we worked with Kevin to get uh, priority for Legion M people to be extras in the film. And there's a whole massive like the last third of the movie takes place at a comic con, so they needed a lot of extras. Yeah, and they needed people that were cosplaying as Blunt Man and Chronic, and so we put the <laughs> word out, and um, we also got a couple um, uh, set visits that Kevin agreed to allow these people to come and they're, you know, the, the idea was they're going to come, they're going to get a chance to watch, you know, the shoot, the shoot for the day, talk to Kevin and Kevin ended up surprising them with a walk on role in the film. So wow. when you're watching that movie and you're seeing the comic con stuff, you know, you're like, Oh, that's a Legion M person. Oh, I know her. Oh yeah. I saw her the other day. Like it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Like it's like our little reunion. 
Yeah. That is so cool. I mean, to me, this sounds like just the ultimate like networking opportunity as well as not just being a fan, but, you know, getting an opportunity to just like this. I mean, I think I remember yeah. seeing um, on social media too, like, you know, here's your chance to be in the upcoming uh, Kevin Smith film. And I saw, you know, Legion M all over and it's just so cool given your community kind of first dibs on that. I, you know, yeah. I think that's that's a tremendous opportunity for people, you know, and, and especially with the, with the story of the card, too. One of my good friends, Jeff, who was actually one of our original sponsors and still a good friend of mine, you know, he builds custom cars. So if he would have seen something like this, he could have built a car and you never know. He might totally. build one for the next movie. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. now I think I think it's it's fantastic. Um uh, the last question I got, um, and this is just kind of like, because you, especially from your industry experience, you know, with as far as the, the big budget movies or whatnot, with all the release dates getting pushed back, do you guys think there's going to be some kind of like a traffic jam, I guess you could say, per se, as far as, because I mean, I know movies get, you know, their dates are out, you know, a year or two in advance. You know, how do you think that's going to affect the movies that were supposed to come out this year as far as when they're going to come out, I guess, from what you know, as far as being like Hollywood insiders? Yeah, yeah. It's been, well, it's been an ongoing discussion that we're having like on a daily basis. And, you know, everyone like in fact, we, we had a, a discussion on one of the um, Film Scout movies from Sundance just about because that's a theatrical release when we would release it. And, you know, how many films do we think will be backed up? You know, the, the nice thing is like what there, there will definitely be kind of a flood, like mm -hmm. once things open up, but I think there'll also be a lot of films that wait to see, cause you know, theaters are going to open, right? right? And they're probably not going to be jammed that first weekend. I think it, it all depends on like, as a, as a society, how comfortable are we like going out? Like, do we start feeling comfortable again? Because right. you know, going to a movie is you know, isn't a necessity. It's not like getting groceries. I mean, right. it is for some of us. But <laughs> yeah, speak for yourself, buddy. Out, you know, there, are, there are alternatives. Um, but one of the things that I would say that is a little bit of a, a saving grace for it is also just keep in mind how many films are not being produced right now. Right. Every single set right is, like across the world is pretty much close so no one's making any movies right so it'll be this lag and it'll probably be you know the timing of it isn't too far off there'll be a bunch of movies that were would have released mm -hmm. those will all come out but all the other movies that were should have been finished mm -hmm. that had to stop production those will be waiting in the wings and they'll need to like start ramping up production again and i i think that's going to be tricky you know, right. because depending on how long it is, it'll be six months later, you know, people will be older, like the yeah. weather will be different. Like you've got a lot of stuff to kind of net out there. That's why we're pretty grateful. Like our movie, the one movie that we were shooting, we finished shooting, it's entirely in post. So Adam, the director is basically sheltering in place, editing the movie, Right. The, which is, you know, like, a, thank God for that. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, uh, the, as far as the, uh, the guest questions, that's what I had right there. Uh, you know, before we wrap up, I mean, any, any shout outs, any, any, uh, kind of like hello moms that you guys want to give out there to, to the fans or just anybody in general, we usually do this thing at the end of, uh, at the end of our show called solo dubs or we'll talk about something for a minute or just give shout outs. But, you know, I want to give you guys a chance to, you know, say hi or, you know, whatever you want to talk about for a couple minutes, have at it. Sure, go, Jeff. You wanna, you wanna? Yeah, give it sure. Time? Well, I mean, I'm gonna give my shout out to um, all of the uh, first responders and the, the the hospital workers and the doctors and the nurses. You know, particularly in places like New York and um, uh, New Orleans. You know, who are dealing with this. I mean, it's 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 sobering that while we're having this discussion about mm -hmm. you know film and 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 the impact on that that there are literally people that are uh facing life and death decisions and you know i think it's it's uh there are so many people out there right now that are literally risking their lives to help other people's lives so thank you to everybody and you know my my, my heart goes out to all of those who are dealing with 
the very real uh, uh, human aspects of what's going on in the world right now. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd also just, you know, I think one thing that's really interesting about this um, is that we are truly all in this together. And yeah. I can't think of a time, um, I mean, you know, where there's been a moment like this, where it's not that like, you know, people in a particular geographic area or people in a certain country mm -hmm. are all uniting uh, to, to, to face something, but literally the entire planet, right, yeah. uh, are all facing the same thing. It's almost like a Independence Day sort of, you know, space yeah. alien invasion or something like that. And, and there's never been a time in human history, you know, save maybe the moon landing, um, you know, when in this connected world that we have, where we're all connected and we can all communicate and we're seeing what's happening around the globe. Like the last mm -hmm. global pandemic, you know, was, was well before media. And so, you know, I think we are truly all in this together. And, you know, I think that, 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 you know, hopefully for me, I know that that brings comfort because all of us are dealing with it. Um, and I just, again, I want to give a, a shout out to the people that are really laying it on the line right now. Uh, thank you for all that you're doing. Awesome. Awesome. Paul. Yeah, I would, I would echo what Jeff, um, Jeff said. I mean, I think, you know, we are, uh, we, we actually launched a, a thing on our website where we want to know about the people in our community. Cause we know we have, you know, doctors and nurses and healthcare workers. And even, I would go even as far as like the people working in the grocery stores and the delivery yeah. services yeah. and, yeah. you know, all the things that are just keeping all of us comfortable really like, and, you know, taking care of us when we're sick, but also, you know, taking care to like, make sure that we don't starve to death, like at home, you know, and that we can, we can do all those things. And um, we, we, uh, we actually launched a thing on our, um, on our webpage, a blog post where we want to, we want to know about those heroes in our community so that we can celebrate them and appreciate them and, and support them. You know, like one of the things that we really, love about being this community is that when we unite we have power we have power yeah. to be supportive of others and you know i think we're seeing that on a global level like we're we're sending supplies to china they're sending them back russia's sending us stuff you know we're all like the whole world is working together to defeat this this issue and this pandemic and you know, we as a community, like we're, we're supporting each other. We launched some, something uh, called Legion M does good for small business, where we're allowing anyone in our community who has been impacted by, by this, um, the, the economic downturn, and maybe they made their livelihood going to comic cons or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we have a whole dedicated part of our website now where we want our community to know, look, you know, if you're, if you can support them, and you can help these businesses, you know, and you're going to buy product from someone, buy it from someone in our community. You know, yeah. we have people that are, that need our help. And so we're, you know, we're, a, we're today, we're a relatively small player. We're not the biggest company on the planet, mm. but you know, we are a community and we, you know, our community is that that's where I would also give a shout out. Like our community has just been like through every, kind of episode that we've been through like this they are just you know they're there they're engaged and you know we couldn't do this without them so we're 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 grateful for for their support and you know we we just hope that legion m can continue to grow so that we can continue to to support one another and and reshape this industry that we love so much I love it, guys. I love it. I mean, you both you both hit it on the head. Um, this is definitely the first time I've ever seen, you know, anything like this. The closest to me, my daughter was actually born four days after 9-11. Oh, wow. So, yeah. you know, that was kind of the last time, at least as a country, you know, we, we all came together. But, uh, you know, Jeff, you're right. I mean, like, as a world, we're finally coming together, putting, uh, you know, aside the differences. Like, we have to, as a planet, beat this.
Yeah. Um, so it is very kind of, uh, you know, I, I use the Independence Day analogy too. It's like, look, we, we got to get our shit together here. <laughs> so um, I couldn't agree more. And, and of course, big shout outs. I, I was in the service industry for a long time. Uh, I still uh, help out a little bit as far as social media marketing with some local bars and restaurants. But, you know, everybody that's still going out there and, you know, doesn't have the luxury of working at home with their families, you know, thank you all so much for everything you're doing. Um, hopefully we can, you know, flatten this curve and, and get through this and please stay home people as, as much as possible. <laughs> um, there's still a couple people out there that think it's all right. They still go out and party and you're, you're making it worse for the rest of us. So, but, um, again, uh, you know, thank you guys so much for joining us. The, the sense of community that Legion M has honestly is very incredibly inspiring to me. I'm all about community and taking care of each other. Um, you know, anyone interested, uh, you know, as far as being a part of this, it's legionm.com. Go on the website, you can see their projects, get more information on the investment portfolio, all that fun stuff. You know, I know I'm definitely going to be taking part in this. I want to be a partner. I kind of want to be Legion M East Coast. So if you need like a East Coast division, let me know. I'll, I'll be your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> but um, yeah, before we sign off, big shout outs to our uh, sponsor and a good friend and attorney that we need every now and again, Andrew Newman, attorney at law. You can check him out at attorneynewman.com. And uh, Zipster, responsible for our amazing website. Our website is popculturepodcast.com. Uh, we unfortunately cannot get the name for Zero Dark Nerdy, but we got the next best thing, Pop Culture Podcast. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so that's going to do it for us. Make sure you check us out on all social media platforms, all your favorite podcasting networks. Again, thank you so much to Paul and Jeff from Legion M. Make sure you check them out. Check out their projects. Amazing company. They're going to be doing big things. Fellas, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Thanks Brian. for having us on the Blast. show. Yeah, really fun. Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management.